Thousands of people went to UD Arena last night for a visitation for Detective Del Rio. The arena is packed right now where his funeral is set to begin. We now take you inside UD Arena for the funeral of Dayton Police Detective George Del Rio. Okay, as you look there inside the UD arena, as uh, we get set to bring you the full coverage here, you see all the seats there in front are full. Yesterday, there were thousands of people showing their respects uh, for several hours for the visitation. And, and once again, we have uh, what appears to be a, a large number, perhaps even thousands, once again, to say their final goodbyes. Again, people are gathering inside the arena right now. That service is going to continue outside the arena after the funeral is over for a final salute. Those events are going to be taking place again right outside the arena. There will be a three volley salute for Detective Del Rio, followed by the playing of taps. Once the folded flag is presented to Detective Del Rio's family, the procession will leave UD Arena. We have more information about that procession on our website, WDTN.com, if you want to see exactly where that's going to go. We're going to listen in now. We are here today to honor the life, legacy, and sacrifice of Detective George Del Rio. To lift up the life, spirit, and memory of this noble, selfless public servant. We are also here to hold Detective George Del Rio's family, friends, colleagues, and all who knew him in tender care, now and always. A number of individuals will give voice to his warm and generous spirit, his devotion to his circle of family, friends, colleagues, and community members whose lives he touched, and his devotion to the noble calling of law enforcement. To help shepherd us through this commemoration, 
We are joined by WDTN Channel 2 news anchor, news anchor Mark Allen, a true friend of law enforcement and a true community servant. I will now ask Mark to come to the podium for this purpose. Chief, thank you. And we'll be hearing more from the Chief a bit later on. Good afternoon. To the family, to the many friends, and to the brothers and sisters in blue of the Dayton Police Department, we extend our deepest sympathies. And to the hundreds of law enforcement officers from around the nation who are joining us here today, to our special guests, among those the Acting Administrator for the Drug Enforcement Administration, Udom Dillon, and several members of senior DEA leadership. James Carroll with us today, Director of the Office of National Drug Control Policy. The Attorney General for the State of Ohio, David Yost, joins us, as do the members of the Dayton City Commission. And also to those who are here today to simply say thank you. We extend our warmest welcome as we gather here today to celebrate the truly remarkable life and career of Detective George Del Rio. It is my great honor every year to emcee the Montgomery County Law Enforcement Memorial Ceremony at Riverscape here in downtown Dayton. And for the past 17 years, just before I read the names of the honor roll of the fallen, it has been my great fortune to say these words. And I know you join me in saying a silent prayer of thanks that we are not adding any new names to this list this year. Sadly, I will not be able to say that next year. As on that day, we will all lift up in prayers both silent and spoken our fallen brother George. His name will now live on forever with those who have gone before him, who have answered the same call, who are remembered forever as heroes, not only because of how they died, but also because of how they lived. Because without their courage, there would be no security, and without their sacrifice, there would be no justice. As you can see on stage, we have a number of speakers joining us here today. Let me first introduce to you, to deliver the eulogy, the chaplain of the Dayton chapter of the Fraternal Order of Police, Chris Fisher. Good afternoon, my brothers and sisters. On this past Wednesday night, I was notified that I was to speak for my brother George. Like any investigator, either sworn or civilian, uncovering the truth rides on the ability to answer three simple questions. Who, what, why? Only then a finding can be reached. The first is who. George Del Rio was born on February 25, 1964, in Mexico City, and most likely thought it was an added bonus in that generation to watch a black and white television with no more than two channels. I know nobody here can relate to that. A few years after his birth, George's parents took him on a one-way trip from Mexico to a better life in the States. This led them to take residence in East Chicago, Indiana. After trying to adjust to a different culture here in the States, George's dad took off back to his homeland, leaving George and his mom to fend for themselves. George didn't know or understand the language, but was determined to speak English through his comic books, watching TV shows, and listening to other kids' voices in the neighborhood. This determination was apparent in the fact 
Not only did he make his way through elementary and high school, he graduated in 1986 from Indiana U University with a bachelor's degree. All this learning accomplished on his own and with George looking after his mother. Does that sound like our George? George met his wife Kathy in 1986, and this is what she said, not my words, I trapped him. Hey, you women got to do what you got to do to get a good man. They were both working at sales uh, at Elder, Beerman, Elder Beerman's department store. Even after her eyesight, Kathy's eyesight, started to diminish several years ago, their love for one another never failed. And out of that love of 32 years for one another, a family of five daughters, Ariel, Erica, Veronica, Naya, and Dana, and three grandbabies, and one on the way. What? What type of police officer was George? George Del Rio graduated from the Dayton Police Academy on March 9, 1989 and was assigned as an officer with the 3rd District. If you guys remember, that's the headquarters inside the old Roosevelt High School. Personally, I do remember George in uniform back in 1989 because he worked the 3rd Relief and I was a patrol officer on 4th Relief. 3rd Relief was 3 to 11 p.m. and I worked 7 p.m. to 3 a.m. George was your typical rookie. He always seemed nervous when addressing veteran officers such as myself. I had a whopping six years on when I first met him. He came to work dressed in a well-pressed uniform when most of us in the third district looked like we slept in our uniforms, dragging our feet to attend roll call. He sported a hat walking in and out of the office when the seasoned officers referred to police hats get this now, as sewer lids. And we kept them stored in our lockers under a pile of old memos, executive orders, and new procedures that had accumulated over the years. Officer Del Rio was also, also wore a shiny chrome-plated badge on the left side of his chest, and on both feet were freshly polished boots. He, like most rookies, were eager to take calls in a sector of the city that had its share of violent calls. Six more years had passed and George stopped working in uniform as he accepted a transfer to the Narcotics Bureau. His assignment there was to curtail the drug trade in the Dayton area. And it didn't matter if George was in or out of uniform because he received numerous, and I mean that, numerous department site accommodations and citations for his dedicated to saving lives here in the Miami Valley. George was commended for something as simple as kind actions to assisting the stranded motorist, to his critical role in the attempt to save the life of a 14-year-old teenager by diving into the great Miami River. George was also recognized for his part in the arrest of a coward who laid in wait and subsequently shot Officer Timothy Rebele in 1995. And George was credited by the FBI in the thwarting the murder for hire of two unknowing victims. This case involved the, re the reverse sale of a firearm, silencer, and explosives. I guess that suspect really wanted to do in his victim. And in 2003, the DEA credited credited George for his translation abilities that led to the recovery of seven kilos of cocaine, a half a kilo of heroin, and $200,000 in cash. Does that sound like our George? The why. And here's where I get in some of God's words. On this past Monday evening, I received a call from Sergeant Rick Oakley and listened with shock as he explained to me what had transpired that night. So, of course, I, like the many and brothers and sisters here today, when we hear what, that one of our family members have been hurt, we respond immediately. 
like Code 3 immediately. I arrived at the hospital and was greeted on the third floor of Grandview by numerous regional officers, detectives, medical physicians, clergymen, our government leaders, and the command staff of the Dayton Police Department. George's family was there, gathered close, and it was obvious George's family needed our prayers, and they received them. After a few hours conversing with other officers, it was learned that retired officer Rick Shevedecker was a patient on the fifth floor. So a few of us gathered, paid him a visit, and after saying a few prayers with Rick, I returned back to the third floor to hear that George, George's condition was grave and he was on life support. I arrived home in the morning hours on Tuesday and asked the Lord to support the family, friends, and co-workers of the Del Rio family and to reveal to me God's word in scripture. Now and for the last week, the first of God's words came to me and these infallible words were once said by Jesus himself. And I will quote, quoting, it says, most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produce, produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life will keep it for eternal life. If you have attended a funeral in the past, you've likely heard this scripture. And for some, this scripture may be a little difficult to understand. But to my understanding, Christ's body laying in the tomb after an agonizing death on the cross was the seed that sprouted new life. We must try to comprehend that scripture states, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Jesus' death opened the gates of heaven for all of us who wish to believe in him. We have a new life after this life to share eternally with God. And you might want to question the scripture verse that mentioned he who hates his life. Who in a police uniform should hate their life? Well, which one of my brothers and sisters who wears the badge prefers to confront armed adversaries? Which peacemaker enjoys responding, responding to serious wrecks up on the highway, especially during low visible conditions? We, as law enforcement officers, hate the circumstances that society quite often puts us in, but we honor the badge by our services to the public. We display our unwavering courage to confront violent and armed criminals such as George did last Monday evening. And we have the integrity to provide the same service shift after shift and year after year. This same honor, courage, and integrity was George's modus operandi to our community for the past three decades. In conclusion, Whether if you're a believer or not, George's spirit is a seed that will, will sustain more lives as his organs will be distributed to others in dire need. The kilos of fentanyl and firearms recovered from the house in question, if had been distributed among criminals, could have destroyed thousands of lives. But because of law enforcement officers and George, they are now idle placed under strict lock and key. George's reward for doing God's will on earth is his place among the other believers in heaven with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, keep George and his family and the Dayton community in your prayers. Everything you do to ensure peace in your communities from those who wish to harm, do so knowing that our fallen brothers and sisters George, is, as no exception, are our shields protecting us from above. Amen. As we all know, the city of Dayton has been put to the test 
in the year 2019 like never before in its long history. And we find ourselves being tested again here today. Joining us next are two women who have led this city through this year of challenge and sorrow. First, the city manager of the city of Dayton, Shelley Dickstein. Public service is a service intended to serve all members of a community. It is dedicated workers providing invaluable services in the public's interest. Public service is an honor and a privilege. Public servants help define and differentiate communities. Their job is not just about a paycheck. Public servants take great pride in the quality of their work and serving their community. The work they do matters. George Del Rio was an extraordinary public servant. He was a difference maker locally, nationally, and internationally. He proudly served in the Dayton Police Department and Drug Enforcement Academy Agency. He was highly skilled and considered an expert among his peers. The work he did mattered greatly. George was an extraordinary public servant because after three decades of service, his warm and generous spirit remained unchanged. He was extraordinary because his commitment for ridding our communities from the very drug dealers seeking to destroy it never wavered. And he was extraordinary because despite the toll of this difficult work, the love and support to his family never lessened. They were always his priority. As we mourn the loss of George Del Rio, let us remember that public service is indeed an honor and a privilege. Let us look for opportunities to be a difference maker. Let us serve our community with pride. Let us be dedicated servants, committed to excellent and compassionate to others and to one another. The work we do matters, but it is not easy. And let us all honor George's work by resembling the extraordinary public servant that he was. Let us, as a community, continue to support our law enforcement professionals as they continue to protect and serve. Lastly, let us support his wife, Kathy, and the entire Del Rio family, not only with prayer, but with thoughtful deeds, so they remain a priority in George's extended family. And next, please welcome the mayor, of the great city of Dayton, Ohio, Nan Whaley. Two thousand nineteen has been the most challenging year the Dayton community has seen in over a generation. Between the hate group rally, Memorial Day weekend, the tornadoes the following Monday, and the Oregon District shooting in August. This has been a year that has put great strain on our first responders. And yet, you all have risen to the task time and time again. Often with little personal recognition, Dayton police keep our community safe during times of crisis and times of calm. Each day, 
we ask our first responders to put their lives on the line. And each day, you do. Detective George Del Rio exemplified this spirit. Seeking no recognition, he worked to keep dangerous drugs off of Dayton streets. Never personally in the spotlight, he was crucial in the combating of the epidemic of illicit drugs that have so challenged our community. Although Detective Del Rio was unknown to many of those he served, he was hardly anonymous among those he served alongside. This last week, I've heard many stories of his kindness and humility from his colleagues and Dayton police. As clear here today, the bond between law enforcement officers is incredibly strong. As a nearly 30-year veteran of the Dayton Police Department, Detective Del Rio held an important place within the organization. To Detective Del Rio's family, particularly his wife Kathy, his daughters, and his granddaughters, please know that Dayton's hearts are with you. The sacrifice that you have made to protect the lives of others is extraordinary. It is a sacrifice that can never fully be repaid. It is a sacrifice that Daytonians are forever grateful for. His role is to make sure that justice is done. But today he steps away from that role for just a few moments and joins us as someone like all of us saddened and shaken by this tragic loss for the law enforcement community in his county. Please welcome next Montgomery County Prosecutor Matt Heck. We are here today to mourn the death of Detective George Del Rio. I want to express our deepest sympathies to Mrs. Del Rio, her daughters, her grandchildren, on behalf of myself and the entire Montgomery County Prosecuting Attorney's Office, of whom many past and present knew and worked with George. I want to say I'm outraged and angry that we lost Detective Del Rio due to a senseless, cowardly, and most hateful, heinous act. And I want you to know that I will ensure that the full and proper justice is given to you. But today, I want to focus my remarks on Detective Del Rio. Detective Del Rio joined the Dayton Police Department as a street officer several years after I became an assistant prosecuting attorney. Those who knew George, either as a street officer, a detective, or a task force member working with our federal partners, everyone was so impressed with his professionalism, his high ethical standards, and his commitment to purpose to serve and protect. And he was genuinely a nice guy. Over the last several days, I have talked with others who knew and worked with Detective Del Rio, attorneys in my office, judges, police officers, so many, who all spoke of his ability, skills, and talent as a police officer, as well as his wonderful personal traits. As your prosecuting attorney and a partner with law enforcement, I appreciate the fact that he was a professional, a team player, and above all, a consummate perfectionist. He crossed every T, dotted every I, so that when he prepared and submitted a search warrant, there was never a problem or question. As someone who was born, raised, and has spent my entire life in this community, I grieve and hurt that we have lost someone who devoted his entire life protecting me, my family, and our community. Detective Del Rio, as well as the, all of the officers sitting here today, entered a profession, a career, to do a job that most people simply cannot do. 
and because of the dangers, burdens, and responsibilities, they don't want to do it. He did the tough work and made the difficult decisions that police officers have to do every day, every minute. A job that is required and must be done to ensure a safe, orderly, and peaceful community and to make life better for us. When a police officer is shot, it's an assault on all of us, on the criminal justice system, on our community, and on our way of life. Such outrageous conduct is an attempt to erode the moral fiber of all of us, of our community, an attack on our democracy, and order and on the rule of law. It cannot and will not be tolerated and will be dealt with severely. The justice system is dependent upon the fabric of the thin blue line, the men and women of local, state, and federal law enforcement. Detective Del Rio touched all levels of that fabric, forged effective and strong partnerships across jurisdictional boundaries, traveled wherever an investigation required his unique talent and expertise to go, to bring major drug dealers to justice and in so doing crippled illicit drug pipelines in the illicit organizations and the networks that supported them. Detective Del Rio set the gold standard of being a police officer. He embodied all of the traits that one looks for in a police officer. Whether it is executing a search warrant, making an arrest, or responding to a mass shooting, it is that bravery that police officers exhibit every day as they routinely, routinely face danger. Now, George Del Rio is a true hero. A true hero accepts the idea of sacrificing his own life every day when he puts that badge on, who does not retreat but runs toward danger, putting his own life in peril because of his love of those he swore to protect. So now we are faced with a difficult challenge of what we can do when we lose a hero, a loved one, like George Del Rio. I think we learn from his bravery and what was always in his heart. We embrace his family and friends to comfort them in their loss and we renew his commitment in our own lives and hearts to serve the public good, our obligation to keep our community safe and find our own sense of bravery to move on and to serve in his memory. Brave men and women do not want us to mourn their loss because they have always been givers, not takers. They want us to give. They want us to acknowledge our love for each other, to comfort their families, their loved ones, and that every time we think or speak of them in the future, we do it with a smile. Detective Del Rio, I want to thank you for all you did for us during your short life for the life that you led, for your example and dedication. You honored us all, and you will be missed. May you rest in peace. To Mrs. Del Rio, your daughters, your grandchildren, during these difficult days, my hope and prayers are that you may find peace and comfort in the wonderful memories you have with George. May God bless you. It is said, a person is not really dead until he is forgotten. George Del Rio, you will never be forgotten. As I'm sure you've all noticed, for the past several days, all the flags here in Montgomery County and also at the State House in Columbus have been flying at half staff in honor of Detective George Del Rio. Our next speaker here today is the man who gave that order and a man with a deep understanding and appreciation for all who wear the badge. Please welcome the governor of the great state of Ohio, Mike DeWine.
We come together as a community this afternoon to remember and to honor the life of George Del Rio. He died doing what he has done throughout his professional career, and that is protecting his fellow citizens. No one, no one has done more in the last several decades to keep drugs out of the Miami Valley than George Del Rio. And we will never know how many lives his actions, his expertise have saved. But we can be sure that they represent many. And it should not surprise us that his final action as an officer was to keep a large amount of fentanyl, the drug that continues to kill so many of our citizens, keeping it off the street. George Del Rio's life confirmed the American dream. He came to this country from Mexico as a young child. And the day that George Del Rio came to the United States was a lucky one for this great country, and particularly a lucky one for this community. For George would grow up to be a very special person. His life has been one of service, 30 years with the Dayton Police Department, 19 of those years on the Drug Task Force, a really unprecedented run. I had the chance to meet him and talk with him a few times. He was a pro. He knew his business. No one, no one was better at it than George was. You know, it takes a special person to do the work that he did each day. Dangerous, demanding, tough, tough work. George was just a natural. He had unique skills. He had unique talent. There was no one quite like him. And those who know him the best, those who work with him every day, they talk of his unwavering commitment and dedication to his wife, Kathy, his daughters, Ariel, Erica, Veronica, Naya, his son-in-laws, his grandchildren. George loved his family beyond measure. He was their rock. And his friends tell me how, just how kind he was, what a compassionate person he was, that he cared. He cared deeply about serving and deeply about protecting others. He was special. He was unique. Once someone met him, it was impossible not to like him, especially because of his infectious laughter. His close friend, Sergeant Kelly Hamilton, said that once Detective Del Rio started laughing at something, you couldn't help but start laughing yourself. Funny, quick-witted, always ready with a funny remark. He was warm-hearted, a sweet man, and people just seem to gravitate to him. Loyal, generous, there to help friend night or day. 
It has been said that great men and great women take up great space even when they are gone. That's certainly true of George Del Rio. But he was a great man not because he died, but because of the way he lived each day. And so today we honor Detective Del Rio's life, his life, and celebrate a life well lived. A life lived with honor, a life lived with bravery, an unrelenting dedication and commitment to his family, to his friends, and to his community. To Kathy, Ariel, Erica, Veronica, Naya, we cannot fathom, we cannot fathom your grief. But please know, all Ohio grieves with you. All Ohio grieves with you today. Because we, we have lost one of our finest. Dayton has endured so much the past few months. But with tragedy comes strength. Dayton is strong. This is a resilient, this is a resilient people, a resilient community. And Detective George Del Rio represented all that is good about Dayton. A good and decent man who lived his life with purpose and love of family and community. And for that, we will always remember him. And for that, we will always be grateful for his life. One of the most important things or first things we shared in common is George grew up in East Chicago, Indiana, and I grew up in Maryville, Indiana, which is one town away. Um, so both of us being from Northwest Indiana in an area in Indiana they call the region area, um, we immediately had things in common. Um, at the time, his, his mom was still living there and my parents still lived there. Um, and so we had a lot of common things growing up that we could talk about and relate to. To get to know George, um, George was a, a, a professional in every way. Uh, he's the best undercover officer I ever met. Uh, he was selfless. Um, as, as you get to work with people, you, you become very close. Um, and one of the things George, George and I would do is uh, one of the jobs that we have is when we seize drugs, often these drugs have to be taken to the lab, which happens to be in Chicago. And we would go together uh, over the years, uh, we would visit our families on that trip. We'd have an overnight trip, and, and he would get to visit his mom, and I would visit my mom and dad. George is a, a, a firearms enthusiast, um, and one of his favorite pastimes is, is firing guns and going to the range. Um, and it happens to be one, one of the things I love to do. And it was something I grew up doing, and it's something my father loves still to do. Um, so we would take my father to the range. Uh, my father's uh, not as capable as he used to be. He's almost 80 years old, and, and uh, so it would be a treat to go up there with George uh, and, and get to see my father and, and George with my father and take him to the range and get a meal together. Um, the, the reason I tell that is because to kind of tell you the character of George, on this last trip just a, a few weeks ago, uh, my father had a firearm that wasn't working correctly at the range. Um, I didn't think much of it after we left the range, but George took the time when we got back here to Dayton to research and to explain and get all the instructions, everything my dad needed to fix the gun. Um, again, just another selfless act and the kind of guy George was, he would do anything for anybody. What you see there is my badge and my partner's badge. We're both brothers and friends forever and just wanted you to know George 
always gave it his all. Never one to step back, but one to always step up, even to the very end. Thank you for everything that you've done for the family. I had anticipated being treated like a rookie, the rookie that I was. But you made me feel like an equal. And you made me understand that we were a family. And I can say with full confidence that I'm not alone in that sense of inclusion. This is a tremendous loss. But if I know George, he would not want it to bend us or to break our brotherhood. Fate whispers to the warrior, you cannot withstand the storm. But the warrior whispers back, I am the storm. Mario was a warrior and an absolutely fierce one. I'm so blessed to have the many memories that we share together of my nickname, Lala, and to have been part of your family. Uh, George actually has a plaque hanging behind his desk in big, bold words that says, Courage, being scared to death, but saddling up anyway. Uh, George always saddled up. As an undercover narcotics cop, George lived up to what we believe in. He was a true representation of unity, strength, integrity, and honor. A true shadow warrior. We instantly built a friendship because George and I both loved to eat good food and to eat out and try new restaurants. George would always tell me that uh, you can never do your best police work on an empty stomach. It was during those times, uh, during the years we worked together, George sort of became a mentor to me in many ways by passing down his knowledge and expertise with his investigations in the field he and I worked in. George was a consummate professional with a strong work ethic who was dedicated to the police department and dedicated to the DA as a task force officer. George Del Rio, a brother, best friend for life, a person who always sticks up for you and always there to help. That was the definition of George Del Rio. Um, came to know George years ago because we were academy classmates and then after the academy we were assigned to the west side in the third district together and the friendship just took off from there. Um, George's devotion to his family was evident when they invited uh, friends and brothers over uh, and George's devotion of love to his wife was even more evident because we would stay up to the late hours in the morning and watch TV with uh, G.I. Joe's surrounding us in his zoo in the basement. Then when it was time for Kathy to go to bed, he would pause the movie, and go up and tuck her in. And instead of just sitting there, we used to call him, well, still call him George Del Rio and the Del Rio ads, because that's all he had was girls. <laughs> um, and... They were raised in a good family, good house, and George probably received that from his mother. I, I visited his mother with George spontaneously and on playing trips in East Chicago. Funny side of George Del Rio is the Del Rio luck. We were parking one day in a parking lot, and he was trying to find a parking spot, and he's like, oh, that's Del Rio luck. What's that, George? Got a parking spot right here up front. So even uh, in this tragedy, Del Rio luck still happens because uh, Naya, Pete, and my wife Mary went to get breakfast Tuesday morning for everybody. They left the parking garage, went about, came back, and uh, Naya said, hey, my parking spot's still there. And spontaneously, all three of them said, Del Rio Luck. The first day I met George, he came into the Dayton resident office, came over to my cubicle, and in George's fashion said, who are you? I was taken back by his uh, approach, uh, identified myself, and he presented me with a license plate and a description of a vehicle that was parked in our parking lot. He said, kid, you got a stolen car in the parking lot of your building. And uh, I kind of shrugged it off. I went to the Leeds terminal. 
ran the license plate and determined that, guess what? He was exactly correct. The car was stolen out of the west side of Dayton. And I knew at that point that George Del Rio was the real deal. So George uh, had an uncanny ability of getting the best parking spot anywhere uh, when we would you know, we'd go places, George would uh, find a spot. And he'd pull into it, it'd be four feet from the door. He'd look over at me and he goes, that's Del Rio parking. I kind of shrugged it off and uh, it continued for the rest of our time together. Well, it made such an impact on me that I began to repeat it in the presence of my family. Um, my oldest my oldest daughter began driving about a year ago, and um, she pulled into a parking spot in upstate New York, and guess what came out of her mouth? She looked over at me and she said, Del Rio parking. One of the funniest guys you'll ever meet, he really was. He, uh, he's just kind of guy that would laugh. He had a, a crazy laugh, just a... Uh, I can't do it. I'm sick. I'm sorry, but if you've heard him laugh, you knew you knew what it was. You could hear him all the way down the hallway. And uh, one thing we used to try to do, we had a group. We had a little they called the Lunch Bunch. And the Lunch Bunch, you know, George's thing and his his saying, he's he like to sit down and break bread like gentlemen. You know, no eating in a car, no you know whatever. And in a hurry, he said, you want to sit down, go someplace, and you break bread like gentlemen. So okay, so Georgia. George drug me into one of the local uh, Mexican food restaurants and that was known, I guess, for a couple of people getting sick out of there. So I said, George, I'm not eating this place. He goes, no, no, trust me, trust me, come on. Takes me in this place and uh, he goes, you got to watch. He goes, you got to watch what the Mexicans eat. I go, what? He goes, yeah, trust me, trust me. He goes, see this? You don't see any of these white people ordering this, do you? I go, no, no, what is He goes, okay, it's a certain soup they have, soup with... Uh, baked all day and chicken and rice. Okay, let me try it. I'll try it. Uh, it was the best soup I ever had in my life. Phenomenal soup. And he actually said towards the end, he said, hey, uh, Kathy, my wife makes this soup. I said, really? Wow. Uh, can you maybe, can she show my wife, Kirsten? You know, they're friends. I say, hey. He said, yeah, no problem, no problem. Bring her over. We'll show her. So I talked to Kathy about it, and she's like, oh, I, I can show Kirsten how to do it. That's fine, yeah. And I said, remember Kathy? I said, Kathy can cook, no doubt. I said, Kirsten, you know, she, she'll give it a shot. But, uh, you know, kind of make the recipe a little simple. And I, sorry, honey. But Kathy, I thought, she said, okay, okay, I'll, I'll make it. She'll, she'll be able to make it wonderful when she gets done. And uh, I'm going to hold Kathy to that. And you still you get some soup. George is speaking fluent Spanish, of course. Of course, he's born in Mexico, but fluent in Spanish. And we're in a car one time. He's setting up this deal with this Puerto Rican guy, and he's talking to him on the phone. And I'm in the drug unit. He's my partner, and I get this great idea, you know, hey, if I was fluent in Spanish, it would, you know, help me at the police department the detective section, maybe and I could, you know, profit from it, you could say. So he gets off the phone, we're sitting there, and I'm driving, and he's looking at me, and I go, hey, we ride in the car together every day, maybe, you know, a little bit of time, you could teach me Spanish, you know, so I could speak. And he says, dude, you, you can't hardly speak English. I'm not wasting my time trying to teach you Spanish. So I never got to learn Spanish, but that was George. Uh, and I'm paraphrasing what he said. It was a little bit more colorful than that. But anyhow, Naya, he taught how to shoot. And the other girls, I mean, he taught too. But Naya seemed to, to, to me to hit it off more than wanting to shoot. And he was a big, in the guns, in the shooting, uh, not and he just, and he always been that one. He's a, he was a fantastic shot. I mean, like, it was unbelievable what a good shot he was. But he would take his kids, and Naya especially has hit it off, and he would spend gun range or whatever. And George liked to build guns, tear them down, build some more. Um, just, he, he was a gun collector. That's what he liked doing. I'm going to miss you, brother, for sure. I love you, and... We'll meet again. I get up there, set us up a couple lanes. It was an honor going into battle with you. We'll take it from here, George. And that the world lost a hero. 
and I'm sorry he's gone. Just remember that where you're going, the range is always open, and there's an endless supply of ammunition. I love him. I miss him. He's my friend. I, that's what I'd say to him. We all lost a good friend. He will never be forgotten, and I will always carry his memory with me um, from this point forward. Oh, hey, one more thing. If you had any doubts whatsoever that this dude wasn't cool, check this picture out. As was beautifully reflected in that video, George Del Rio had not only an exemplary 30-year career with the Dayton Police Department, it was his work at the federal level with the Drug Enforcement Administration that made his career truly one of legend. And it's also why you heard all the voices but did not always see all the faces of the people who spoke. But two of those colleagues join us next beginning with, from the Dayton office, Special Agent Stephen Miller. My name is Steve Miller, and I currently have the privilege of serving as the resident agent in charge of the Drug Enforcement Administration's Dayton Resident Office. The Dayton Resident Office was established in 1998, and the Dayton Police Department was the first agency to establish a partnership with the new DEA office. In the early days, the number of Dayton Task Force officers actually was greater than the number of DEA agents. Dayton Police Department Detective George Del Rio joined the DEA office in the year 2000. While George was not an original cast member, over time he became a cornerstone that was part of the foundation on which the office was built. George was an exceptionally talented investigator who was entirely comfortable with who he was. The confident way that George conducted himself had a calming effect on those around him. George had an unusual knack for applying both logic and critical thinking in a way that made complicated issues seem quite simple. As an example, one day in the office, several people were discussing the pros and cons of organ donation. This conversation was occurring near George's coveted back corner office space, and initially George was content to passively listen. As the participants of the conversation made points and counterpoints, both for and against the merits of organ donation, George stood up unannounced and said, the way I see it is if you're at the point where you're donating your organs, then the part of you that makes you who you were is already gone. So before that happens, you can decide not to be so selfish and help others out. George then sat down and continued doing whatever it was he was doing. George's proclamation effectively ended the conversation. It's often been said that George was the king of one-liners. George also had an uncommonly strong sense of justice and fairness. A significant amount of George's efforts throughout his career involved acting in an undercover capacity. George's undercover work extended beyond the Dayton area as he provided support for other state and federal offices throughout Southern Ohio and beyond. It has been said that undercover work came so naturally for George that it almost wasn't fair to the bad guys. In reality, the opposite was true, as George was often more than fair. One day in the office, George recounted a past undercover effort that he had been involved with. 
It's worth mentioning that when George told such stories, he always made a point to show respect to the case agent by mentioning who the case agent was. This story began with George calling out across the office to the case agent. Hey, do you remember that time that your informant got a call from that guy looking to buy a couple of bricks and you put me in as the undercover to act as a source of supply? Now, such operations are rare and they have some interesting considerations. This type of operation is typically reserved for higher, uh, higher level drug traffickers. To keep the math simple, we'll use one kilogram or two kilograms for this example. To ensure that the appropriate charges were filed and the right thing happened, the case agent and George decided that when George met the suspect, George would tell the suspect, hey look, if you can only sell one kilogram, then only take one kilogram. But if you can take two and that's normal for you, then take two. This was an important gesture because the difference between taking one or two kilograms would effectively double the amount of jail time the suspect would face. At the conclusion of this story, George explained that just because you can do something doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do and that the badge is only as good as the man or woman standing behind it. Retired Army Lieutenant Colonel David Grossman's book titled On Combat recounts a story told to him by a retired Vietnam veteran. This story best describes the type of man that George was. Most of the people in our society are kind, gentle, productive creatures who can only hurt one another by accident or under extreme provocation. This is true. These people are sheep. Nothing negative is meant by calling them sheep. These are the healthy, productive citizens. It's like the pretty blue robin's egg. Inside it is soft and gooey, but someday it will grow into something wonderful. But the egg cannot survive without, it, without its hard blue shell. Police officers, soldiers, and other warriors are like that shell, and someday the civilization they protect will grow into something wonderful. But for now, they need warriors to protect them from the predators. Then there are the wolves, and the wolves feed on the sheep without mercy. Do you believe that there are wolves out there who will feed on the flock without mercy? You better believe it. There are evil men in this world, and they are capable of evil deeds. The moment you forget that, or you pretend that it is not so, you become a sheep. There is no safety in denial. The aggressive sociopaths who have a capacity for violence and no empathy for their fellow citizens, those are the wolves. But what, but what if you have a capacity for violence and a deep love for your fellow citizens? Well, then you're a sheepdog, a warrior someone who is walking the hero's path, someone who can walk into the heart of darkness and to the universal human phobia and walk out unscathed. The sheepdog devotes their lives to protecting the flock and confronting the wolf. George was a sheepdog. On Monday, November 4th, 2019, George went down a stairway into a basement where he knew danger likely awaited. The amount of time that elapsed between when George was first injured and when his brothers and sisters got him out of that basement was remarkably short. The personnel that went down those steps to help their fallen comrade were motivated by an almost unimaginable amount of courage. But courage alone does not get you all the way down those stairs. There was devotion coupled to, the courage, to their courage, and that is what allowed them to get to George as quickly as they did. Another word for devotion is love. In the heat of the moment, when the chips are down, and when things are not going well, it's important to remember that in those moments, as law enforcement officials, all we have are one another. It's important that we take care of one another on the street, but it's equally important that we take care of one another in the wake of such a profound tragedy like what just occurred. This profession does not make you live longer, and it does not make your family love you more, but it is a noble and worthy cause. Please hear these words. If you are struggling, do not struggle alone. There are num numerous resources available. All you have to do is ask. It may interest you to know that a lot of the character traits possessed by George are not all that uncommon within the rank and file of the Dayton Police Department. The sheer volume of quality personnel within the Dayton Police Department did not happen by chance, and it did not happen overnight. It is a true testament to the leadership of the department as the culture of any agency is ultimately decided by the people at the top. Several recent tragedy, tragedies 
here in Dayton have allowed us all to observe the impressive amount of talent and the inherent leadership abilities so casually employed by Chief Richard Beal. It's comforting to know that not only is Chief Beal a strong and natural leader, but so are numerous members of, the, of his command staff, to include Assistant Chief Matthew Carper and Assistant Chief Eric Henderson. It's also worth mentioning that the Dayton area has, ex, has experienced a sustained 55 to 60 percent reduction in opioid overdose deaths over the better part of the last two years. While this reduction is undoubtedly due to numerous causal factors, a significant portion of the credit can be attributed to Major Brian Johns and Major Joseph Wiesman. Major Johns and Major Wiesman's innovative approaches and exhaustive efforts in the area of not only enforcement, but the equally important areas of prevention and ed education have had dramatic effects throughout this community. Speaking of community. Do not take for granted what a blessing it is to work in a community that appreciates the efforts of law enforcement. The amount of public, dis the amount of public support displayed over the last week has been at times humbling and at other times breathtakingly impactful. Thank you for everyone throughout the community who has voiced support for or found ways to be helpful to the men and women of law enforcement throughout the Dayton area. In closing, George Orwell may have said it best when he said, good, good people sleep peaceably in their beds at night only because rough men stand ready to do violence on their behalf. George, you were our brother. You were never alone, and we'll always love you. Thank you. And next from the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration Regional Office in Detroit, of which Dayton is a part, please welcome Special Agent Keith Martin. On behalf of the Department of Justice and the Drug Enforcement Administration, I wish to extend condolences to the family and friends of George Del Rio. I cannot adequately express our gratitude for his commitment to our profession, to our country, and to DEA across 19 years of service. George was deputized as a DEA task force officer on May 15, 2000. In fact, George was the second longest serving DEA task force officer in the Detroit Field Division, and we could not be more proud to have him on our team. Task force officers, not only in Ohio, but across the country, are a central link between DEA and local communities. Federally deputized DEA task force officers have the same authority and jurisdiction as our special agents. Historically, DEA task force officers have been some of the most essential and effective partners in building cases against drug trafficking organizations throughout Ohio and around the world. This was true with George. And no one, no one did it better. If you were his friend, and he had thousands of them, just look in this arena today. You could have no finer partner or companion to the men and women of the Dayton Police Department and the DEA Dayton office. You know exactly what I mean. He was an incredible detective and task force officer. If, however, you were a target in his investigation, there was no one who would work harder to make sure you would be put behind bars. Yet for all of this, for all his acts of bravery and all who looked up to George, This was not his greatest legacy. That was reserved for other titles he held, the other roles he had, that of 
husband, father, grandfather. He was incredibly proud of his family and took pride in their accomplishments. George never shied away from difficult challenges or dangerous situations, serving on the front lines of our fight for justice and for our country. More than 30 years ago, he joined that battle, and today we honor him. We shall forever be grateful to George, to all those here who admire him, love him, and miss him. He died for his country in every sense of the word. He gave his life for all of us. He is a true American hero, a police officer, a task force officer, a husband, a father, a grandfather. We honor him, we will always remember him, and I would especially like to thank George's family for sharing him with us. It was an honor to know him. He was a hero to everyone. God bless George, God bless each of you, and God bless America. Please at this time welcome back the Chief of the Dayton Police Department, Richard Beale. There are no words, no words adequate to explain the depth of our loss or the magnitude of our sorrow, the death of our colleague, George Del Rio. It is even more so for his wife, Kathy, their daughters, grandchildren, other family members, friends, neighbors, and the many others whose lives he touched. And there are no words to adequately convey his love of life, family, friends, or the dedication to his law enforcement career and to the service of our community, our state, and our country. But to not make a valiant attempt to find such words will lack courage, tenacity, and compassion. The very traits that Detective George Del Rio exuded. So we must try to find them. Others have just done so. I will try to find the words. The right words. 
the best words to do so. Although even in their ultimate inadequacy to convey the profound matters of the heart, it matters a great deal. It matters a great deal to acknowledge the life and sacrifice of Detective Del Rio. George served with honor and valor for three decades. He served his family, his community, and his nation. He served in a manner which he could be counted upon to perform at the highest level of dedication and professionalism. He served as a teacher and coached dozens of other detectives in the art of investigation. He served as a teammate, never hesitating to step away from his own work to help his friends and his coworkers. In his final act as a Dayton police detective and as an agent for the Drug Enforcement Administration, he served on a team to remove a massive quantity of deadly narcotics from our community. In doing so, he moved unhesitatingly towards danger and made the greatest sacrifice possible within the nobility of the law enforcement profession. He acted with great courage, heart, commitment, and dedication as he had done throughout his career. Doing so, George, along with his law enforcement partners, also acted to prevent the mass casualties within and beyond our community that would have inevitably occurred if the large quantity of toxic drugs that had been amassed had been allowed to hit the streets of our communities. George's selfless action and his ultimate sacrifice is reminiscent of what Abraham Lincoln called the last full measure of devotion. It is incumbent upon us, particularly his colleagues and fellow law, for, law enforcement officers, to act as Lincoln advocated by taking increased devotion to that cause for which he, George, gave the last full measure of devotion. Detective Del Rio not only served to advance the nobility of his profession, he served to bring people together. His warm and generous spirit touched everyone he knew. His colleagues describe him as a dedicated family man. You have already heard that time and time again. When he's not at work, he was with his family. When he was at work, he spoke fondly about his family. He spoke with great pride about his daughters and with great love for his wife, Kathy. As already been mentioned, he was known to love food and insisted upon eating like a civilized person. He rejected a more typical cop diet of fast food from drive through windows. George preferred to sit at tables in restaurants and often invited colleagues from all parts of his professional life to dine together. He brought people together. When those people sat for meals, they forged friendships and strong working relationships. George served to create community. His light shined brightly throughout his 30-year career, during which his expertise in drug enforcement work took him beyond the Dayton city limits, beyond the borders of Ohio, and had effect beyond the borders of the United States. His valor took him into the vast arena of combating illicit drug trafficking, the arena of great causes in life, and he did so, as expressed in the words of Teddy Roosevelt, while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold, timid souls who neither know victory or defeat. Detective Del Rio spent his entire career in the gritty arena of law enforcement while daring greatly. His exemplary performance is defined by great achievements not known by timid souls. He left a legacy of service and sacrifice to this noble profession that is rare even among the best of us. Our hearts are broken. 
but fixed on the great task before us. That we may follow with increased devotion to honor his life, his courage, his persistence, and his compassion. While there are truly no adequate words to honor George Del Rio's service and sacrifice, the following video with his images, music, and words approaches the honor which is showed so justly deserved. Franklin Covey's The Nobility of Policing. Please direct your attention to the video. In closing, I offer the following wish for blessings to Detective Del Rio, his family, friends, all those whose lives he touched, for the men and women who have shared with him the indestructible fabric of the thin blue line. May you be safe and free from harm. May you be at peace. May you at all times be held in love and met with compassion. Please welcome back FOP Chaplain Chris Fisher. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your presence today inside this magnificent arena for our family and friends to honor the life of a peacemaker, the life of a loving husband and dad, the life of a dedicated hero working for peace in the, in the Miami Valley. Lord, we have been stricken with grief and despair in recent times, but are for certain you and your Son and the Holy Spirit are our allies to assist us in lifting us off the ground 
for recovery because scripture says we are afflicted in every way but not crushed, perplexed but not despairing, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body of the dying Jesus so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. So God bless you, George. God bless all who have the courage to wear the badge and serve boldly in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
We would ask you all now to please stand and remain silent. As we prepare now for the final salute, which will be taking place outside the arena, we would ask that you please wait to be released to the south entrance by the ushers. Thank you. They're now wrapping up what was an amazing tribute to Detective George Del Rio. We heard from a number of elected or appointed government officials as well as law enforcement. They spoke of an amazingly decorated law enforcement career. 
but way beyond that, you heard so many incredible stories about the individual, the the friend, the the husband, the dad, the the granddad. Uh, words like from uh, Chief of uh, Dayton Police Richard Beal saying that he brought people together uh, to create community. Just such amazingly heartfelt, um, sincere, noble words for a man that they spoke of so nobly. And, and that he was so noble at the way he went about his craft. And we got to hear uh, some of the inside stories too. Got to hear about Del Rio Luck. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that I'll ever pull into another parking <laughs> spot by the door and not think of that again. Um, it's something that it sounds like everybody who was close to him uh, is going to carry with them for a long time. It, we, we heard one of the speakers, I don't remember who it was, but said that those who lose their lives, like Detective Del Rio did, they're heroes not because of how they died, but because of how they lived. And I think that was really the message that we all could take away this afternoon, that Detective Del Rio was a hero because of how he lived. Chief Beale said, uh, spoke of uh, Detective Del Rio, of uh, his life, his spirit, the memory of this noble and selfless servant. Now, this portion of uh, the funeral is has just finished. This is the memorial portion. Uh, the people from inside UD Arena, as you see, are now moving outside for the next phase of this ceremony, which will be the final salute. And that will continue with the firing of three volleys to honor Detective Del Rio, followed by the playing of taps. And then, of course, the presentation of the flag to Detective Del Rio's family. The procession then from UD Arena to the funeral home is scheduled to begin in about 25 minutes around 2 p.m. And we're going to take a look at that route. This is where the procession is going to go next. It will head north on Edwin C. Moses Boulevard to 3rd Street, go through downtown to get to Brown Street, and then from there they will head down Far Hills Avenue. The procession will continue south to Ron Road before the procession ends at Tobias Funeral Home. Now, there are going to be plenty of road closures along this route. You'll want to avoid that area until the procession is over. Of course, a lot of people, though, will probably want to stop and see or gather line the streets to pay their final respects. Now, we well. have more coverage of Detective George Del Rio's life as well as his legacy at WDTN.com. You can also find that on our 2 News app. You can also watch our live continuing coverage of the funeral the procession right now as well on WDTN.com as well as the 2 News app. But we want to leave you with some of the images you may have seen at different spots during this memorial inside the funeral as the Miami Valley says goodbye to Dayton Police Detective George Del Rio who died after being shot in the line of duty. These are images provided by the people who knew Detective Del Rio best, his friends and family. We will now return you to your regularly scheduled programming.